What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 18. This is the show where we talk about some of the coolest abandoned places in the world. So the Walt Disney Company has always had ideas that just haven't followed through. These were big projects that just never saw the light of day. A few examples could be Port Disney, where the Queen Mary is currently docked, or the Riverfront Square, planned to be in St. Louis. But there's always been one planned theme park that was super close to actually becoming reality, and that's Disney's America. So the park was planned on a very key point in Disney's history, and it was developed by Disney's then CEO, Michael Eisner. In order to tell the story, we need to go back a bit. After Walt Disney died in 1966, the company had been declining in most aspects. Many actually don't know that the Disney company was in real risk of being broken up and sold off to other companies. So the Disney company brought in an outsider to lead, the CEO of Paramount Pictures, Michael Eisner. Love him or hate him, he kinda did save the entire company. So when Michael came in the door, he announced a huge revamp of, well, actually the entire company. So they began to pump out classic movies such as Who Framed Roger Rabbit and The Little Mermaid in the late 80s. Michael also began to expand the company with film subsidiaries like Hollywood Pictures, with Arachnophobia being one of the first non-family friendly films the company had distributed. Eisner also purchased ABC and ESPN during this time. As for the parks, Michael had a pretty ambitious idea as to what he wanted to do. He wanted to rapidly expand all of Disney's theme parks. See, Eisner was kind of a competitive guy, and there's actually even stories of Michael allegedly driving over to where Universal Studios Florida was being built, and just standing outside the fence and just looking at the construction of the park. So Michael wanted to expand the parks, which meant the construction of brand new parks. So with all the announcements of the new attractions in the American parks, Eisner announced Euro Disney Resort, a park to be placed in Paris. And obviously now this park is called Disneyland Paris. So as Euro Disney Resort opened in 1992, the Disney company announced something brand new that no one really saw coming. In November of 1993, the Walt Disney Company announced they would be building a theme park in Virginia called Disney's America. The idea for this actually came from the impending failure of Euro Disney Resort. Around two years before the park's opening, Eisner knew the park would open with huge amounts of debt. So the idea began to be passed around, instead of building this huge Disneyland resort, they just built a smaller regional park in the United States. One of the largest tourist-heavy cities in the country is Washington, D.C. Early into the planning of this, it really was just a small idea they had. What they later learned was that the company Exxon had a massive chunk of land in Virginia, and was planning to build a subdivision on it. The only thing was that the housing market completely collapsed. This caused Disney, and especially Michael Eisner, to become very interested in this land. The idea for the park was actually very different from what they had done in the past. So with the announcement of the park, details came out publicly, and honestly the park sounds pretty cool. Now I won't go over everything, but I will highlight some of the coolest things. Now with this park, unlike others, it wouldn't start on a main street. Guests would enter at something called Crossroads USA which would be set at the years 1800 to 1850. It would start this way so as you travel through the park, you would be traveling through key parts of American history, which is stupidly clever. Now one of the most interesting things to me, as the themed facade buildings down the streets would have shops and such on the first floor, on the second and third floor would actually be filled with hotel rooms, which really is different and would allow guests to actually stay inside the park. Like most Disney parks, it would feature several distinct themed areas. These would all build off of Crossroads USA. One of these being a full-size recreation of a Civil War fort that would feature a 360 Circle Vision film inside. Adjacent to the area would feature an authentic battlefield in which reenactments of the Civil War would actually take place. Others included a classic American theme park and something called Victory Field, a full recreation of a World War II airfield complete with full-scale war-era aircrafts and hangars. This area would also feature a simulator-like ride that would take guests on American military flight. This ride actually later on became Soarin' at Epcot, California Adventure, and Disneyland Shanghai and eventually Disney Sea in 2019. The park would also house several sound stages and studios with the idea of holding presidential debates in them, which is a really intriguing idea. See, Michael was really passionate about the idea behind this park. The mindset was that since the park was so close to Washington DC, it would act as a tourist hub. 
Guests would spend two or three nights at the resort, and then take a Disney bus down to the actual real tourist destinations in DC. The resort was also set to have a 27-hole golf course, 300 campsites, and a downtown Disney-like area. The only planned hotel to be built on the site was a Civil War Air Lodge, similar to Walt Disney World's Wilderness Lodge. So with Michael and the company looking forward to this interesting and unique park, well, what happened? Well, actually people didn't take it too well, specifically people who live in Virginia. Actually, lots of people in the area began to show great opposition to the planned park, with people in worry that the resort would ruin the local environment. The claim was that the Disney park would bring in heavy traffic and urbanize the entire area. Others claimed that the park would pull revenue away from other non-profit tourist attractions. The planned site was also only a few miles away from a national battlefield park, where over 300,000 soldiers died. And of course, people had problems with this. The backlash didn't stop here though. In spring of 1994, award-winning historian David McCulloch formed a group directly to oppose the project. More criticism came in to even opposing the name Disney had chosen for the park, claiming that Disney was trying to corporatize the country. As thousands of people came out to protest the park, it was time for Disney, and especially Michael Eisner, to reevaluate their decision. So while looking over the facts, with all the public opposition, the eight-month operating schedule, and the legitimate finances, they made the decision to instead focus 100% on history, they'd redevelop the park into something different. What they came up with was Disney's American Celebration. This version would focus more on the fun aspects of America rather than the actual history. <laughs> Now, not too much is known about this version, however, it would feature more of the entertainment side of America, such as Coney Island and a full-size recreation of New York's Ebbets Field. The new idea for the company only lasted six weeks when Michael Eisner finally decided to give up on the Virginia Park. So, on September 28, 1994, Michael Eisner officially announced the Disney company would be abandoning its plans to build a park in Virginia. However, Michael did say a good idea like this will never die. See, the thing was, Disney was cancelling a lot of the projects they had previously announced in the early 90s. Disney's America was just one of them. This site is in the process of turning into Sunset Boulevard. The legendary Hollywood Theater District will feature the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. It'll drop you 13 stories straight down through the fifth dimension, right into your own episode of The Twilight Zone. Across the lot, you'll be able to take a wild trip on the Toontown Transit, a runaway bus that hurtles through the cartoon streets of Toontown. Over at Epcot Center, the Imagineers are hard at work on a space pavilion for Future World and a new Russia pavilion for World Showcase plus a thrilling ride through Mount Fuji at the Japan Showcase. In the early 90s, Eisner wanted Disneyland to become more of a resort destination, and in order to do that, they would need to begin seriously looking into building a second theme park. The idea they came up with was Westcott. Now Westcott deserves its own separate episode, but to put it shortly, it was Disney's version of Epcot on the West Coast. Hence, hence the name West Cot. Okay, you get it. The park itself looked absolutely incredible. However, with its $3 billion price tag, the project was scrapped four years after it was announced. So with Disney still looking to build a second theme park in California, Disney's America was given some life again when nearby Knott's Berry Farms went up for sale. One of the key drawings for the company was that the park had a full-size recreation of Independence Hall. So the idea was that Disney would buy this park and turn it into what Disney's America could have been. However, the Knott's family didn't feel too keen on the idea of Disney coming in and changing huge portions of the park. This, along with other problems with distance, killed Disney's America for good. Actually, after Knott's declined Disney's offer, they got into some really bad financial situations and actually had to sell the park to Cedar Fair. We all know how we feel about Cedar Fair. <laughs> so later on in 1998, it was announced that Disney finally decided on what they should do with Disneyland's second park, and what we got, well, was the lackluster Disney's California Adventure. However, in 2009, Disney actually bought a 15-acre parcel of land in the National Harbor. 
This morning, news of a big economic boost. It looks like Disney is coming to the Washington area. The Walt Disney Company just bought 15 acres of land at the National Harbor. But we do know that Disney has purchased this parcel of land that we're standing on here at the National Harbor, and they do plan to build. The National Harbor on the banks of the Potomac River in Prince George's County has six hotels, a convention center, plenty of shops and restaurants, and now developers are hoping to offer a new Disney Resort Hotel. But this will not be a theme park. We want to be clear about that but a standalone hotel resort. Disney purchased this 15-acre parcel for $11 million. Spokesmen say they have a lot to consider in coming months and years before deciding exactly when they're going to break ground. But we're told that both Prince George's County and developers here at the National Harbor have been working on this deal for years and are very excited about the purchase. Disney says that whatever they build here, it will definitely leave the Disney footprint in the Washington area. The idea was to build a 500-room DVC resort and reuse the bus idea we talked about earlier from Disney's America. However, Disney became worried about the project and developers moved on without Disney. So of course it never happened. So what happened to the land and all the concepts Disney had for the park? Well, as for the land in Virginia, it was sold to a residential building company and built a large golf course community. It really would be cool living there, just knowing what could have been on that land. Plus the houses are nice, I mean, expensive, but pretty nice. As for the ride concepts, like I said before, the Soarin' attraction is now being used in three Disney parks. Another attraction that was reused is the Lewis and Clark Expedition, a raft-like ride that later on became Grizzly River Run, which can be found in Disney's California Adventure. So it's kind of hard to say what will actually happen with this idea. Michael Eisner was replaced by Disney's new and current CEO, Bob Eidger, in 2005. So it's kind of hard to say if the persistence of Disney's America theme park is still with the company. However, like most Imagineers say, a good idea never dies, and Disney's America is currently shelved. So when Disney is ready to build a third North American theme park, there's a good chance it might be Disney's America. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching.